Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the fourth annual SharePoint and Office 365 State of the Market Survey Results Webinar. That is a mouthful. Um, thank you for your time, and I'm glad you're able to join us. And I really hope that you find this interesting. That's me. Um, I'm Vice President of Marketing, and I, um, I've been in this business for about 20 years, and I concentrate on the strategic and the tactical uh, marketing and um, for concept searching. Before that, I began my career at IBM as an advisory systems engineer, focusing on mid-range solutions to medium and large accounts. Our agenda today is you only have two slides on us and what we do. Everything else is non-vendor related, so you have to get through the first two slides. Um, so who we are and what we do, um, how the survey was set up, the parameters that we used. We're going to take a high-level view of Microsoft, um, cloud adoption, connectivity, SharePoint Online, look at the competitive landscape based on what you all told us, um, metadata, and your priorities. Um, um, and these are the application priorities that you told us that you were working on this year. And then we'll just touch briefly on what you're all doing with file shares and exchange. Um, for those of you who don't know who we are, um, we've been around for some 14 years. We've always focused only on metadata generation, classification, and taxonomy management solutions. You can see we have some uh, really big customers, and we also have some really, really small companies with strict regulatory requirements. We're not only a SharePoint platform, but we do have an entire suite of products and utilities that run natively in SharePoint, Office 365, OneDrive for Business, and we do support all versions of SharePoint and Office 365. What do we do? I kind of already told you what we do. Um, we generate metadata, but our metadata is actually compound term metadata. So compound term metadata is multi-term metadata. So it could be a five, six, seven words that represent a concept. So basically, most everyone's interested in search, so that compound term metadata then would be fed into the search engine index. But it's also used for um, other applications too. Uh, auto classification and taxonomy and native term store management. Um, well, one of the, our differentiators is, is that it's uh, install once and then deploy for any application that uses metadata. So as I already mentioned, search, but it's um, migration, data privacy, records management, policy enforcement, compliance, and the list goes on and on and on. So um, it's really very nice for our clients because they usually tackle multiple projects. So that is it for us. Survey history. Um, we're going into our fifth year. We often ask the same questions to see where we were last year and where we're going. We add new questions based on media and analyst views. We also take client feedback, and it's on the next slide, but we never ever send the um, survey to any of our clients or our prospects simply to maintain vendor neutrality. We compile the questions, and then we have a deliverable, which is a white paper. This is our fourth annual survey. It was conducted from March to June. We had 413 unique responses. We had made it available via social and LinkedIn and our website and news. Um, our objectives was really to get a, a bird's eye view, really, of SharePoint organizations and, and Office 365, um, what the infrastructure was, what their migration plans were, their application priorities the use of metadata and the term SOAR, and really what was planned or projected that they were going to do in the future. The questions were multiple choice, and respondents could select more than one response. Therefore, the numbers do not add up to 100%, because I usually have about 50 people tell me that numbers don't add up to 100%, and I do know that. So um, you'll see some screwed up percentages, but really that's why that happened. We do strictly maintain vendor neutrality in our um, white papers, and also in this, we don't, um, uh, it's, it's not a push for any of our products. If we look at um, Microsoft, uh, Real Story Group believes that the gap between on-premise and cloud has never been greater. 
They say that any hybrid strategy will require custom code or organizations will have to use a pre-configured portal solution. So if you look at the two options Microsoft is giving us, it's custom code, which means you have to probably rewrite applications for the cloud that already run in SharePoint, or you have to use a pre-configured portal solution, which probably won't meet your needs, and there aren't a whole lot of those around. So um, kind of probably agree, I agree with Real Story Group here. Um, SharePoint versus Office 365. Microsoft Baby is Office 365, sometimes to the neglect of, of SharePoint. Um, Microsoft has a tendency to send out mixed signals. Um, I'd say blunders, but that's probably a bit strong of a word. Um, they typically neglect SharePoint, so it, SharePoint actually plays second fiddle. Uh, SharePoint 2016 didn't roar in like a lion, but more like a lamb, and offered no really compelling reason for organizations to migrate, except for those large organizations who needed the performance and architectural features. Uh, SharePoint Online has grown by 38%, so poor SharePoint again is in the identity struggle. Is it a platform, is it a content management system, or is it for portal development? And basically it's grown up to be all three. SharePoint versus Office 365, we mentioned it, plug and play versus Azure, they're pushing Azure and pre-configured applications, which are kind of, um, it's kind of a dichotomy there. Um, and the question becomes, for you all, is why reinvent the wheel for the cloud? If you look at Office 365, they have the Security and Compliance Center, and you all have to ask yourself, is that good enough? For many organizations, it probably will be good enough. Um, but the e-discovery is somewhat lightweight. Um, it's good for organizations without a lot of litigation needs. Uh, the Record Center, despite the DOD 5015.2, if you look at a commercial record management application, it runs circles around the record center. And then you have security. If you look at OneDrive for Business and you look at DLP, DLP is great as long as you're looking for privacy data because those are the descriptors that Microsoft provides. If you're looking for any confidential information, you won't be able to find it. And the biggest problem with DLP is that it's after the fact. So once you discover a violation, you already have a data breach. So um, DLP leaves something to be desired. So let's take a look at some of our survey um, results. In 2015, we had a mixed bag. We had a lot of people that were still on 2007 and 2010. Last year, um, well, for this year's survey for last year. SharePoint 2013 picked up the lion's share of 53% migrated to SharePoint 2013, and 38% migrated to SharePoint Online. Uh, migration. Um, what are their plans for migration? Usually what we see is 26.2% plan to migrate to SharePoint Online. The bulk of the amount of content to be migrated ranges from 10 terabytes to 30 terabytes. And those who are migrating will do so in 12 to 24 months. And that has been something that we've seen consistently in every single one of our surveys is when they discuss their migration plans, usually it's up to a two-year window in time time before they'll migrate. Um, this graphic states that 40% uh, of respondents in terms of cloud adoption saw an increase in revenue, 77% felt it gave them a competitive advantage, and 71% have said cloud services as increased business agility. Um, in a report by RightScale, they found that 93% of respondents prefer the hybrid cloud model, and 82% of enterprises already have a hybrid cloud strategy in place. Interestingly, 68% of enterprises run less than one-fifth of their application portfolio in the cloud. And this is something that's also reflected in the survey results, is that the core business processes are remaining in-house on 
on premises and not in a cloud. Um, and this is an important finding. Assuming the statistics are valid, enterprises are not moving many core applications to the cloud. So Microsoft's cloud first approach is at odds with the reality. Cloud adoption, what did you tell us? Why the cloud connectivity and to save money? Um, the bullets on the right hand side, which I'm not going to read, are compliments of Accenture. And they did a study on what uh, companies who use the cloud were able to achieve. I somewhat have a problem with it being in um, marketing and helping clients justify an ROI. I don't know how I can tie agility to a financial number. I don't know how I can tie innovation to um, a number either. So I think this is what the people told them, um, and I assume that they're valid. I just don't understand really some of the uh, metrics behind how they arrived at um, the uh, the business growth and, and why it is due to a certain um, thing. So anyway, what you guys want is connectivity and save money. Connectivity. Mobile is the Achilles heel for Microsoft, but mobile digital media is now pacing desktop usage. Um, to take full advantage of the cloud and collaboration, remote users and mobile users must be able to access applications as if they were on-premise. Uh, Office 365 does provide connectivity, but mobile continues to be the Achilles heel. The recommendations are to test care. Carefully. Um, according to a KPCB report, mobile digital media is now pacing desktop usage. Um, a key consideration, though, which a lot of people um, I've been reading aren't really paying attention to, is the security for mobile devices. Today, most employees leverage a wide variety of applications to get their jobs done efficiently and unwittingly expose corporate data and systems to malware and the possibility of data theft. So they said in the future, within a year or so, as mobile becomes more uh, common as a, a tool for businesses, is that the security threats are going to uh, grow stronger because they're going to be focused on mobile instead of just on the systems itself. Why SharePoint Online? So we asked um, in our survey why were they using SharePoint Online and this year's survey said they're using it for collaboration, reduced costs, remote user access and mobile connectivity and I think um, that ties in with the 38% increase in people who are using SharePoint Online and Office 365. I think for the past couple of years, a lot of SharePoint organizations, and you guys could probably tell me if I'm way off base, um, have been concerned about getting the connection issues resolved. So I think now when we've seen that increase going to SharePoint Online, that should probably keep growing. Um, and 2015, it was reduced cost, content lifecycle management, and collaboration. So it has changed for the past year, at least with um, the remote user access and mobile connectivity. Why don't they want to use SharePoint Online? Um, Non-approved applications. For the past three years, non-approved applications never even got one response. And this year it was 99%. Uh, admin and maintenance, compliance, security, um, and last year it was security, integration, and compliance. The non-approved applications um, are a very uh, big deal. It's called shadow IT, if you guys don't know that term. And really what it is, is because of the cloud and users are bringing in personal applications as well as their preferred business applications and loading them in the cloud and using them. And unfortunately, IT doesn't know anything about them. Uh, most organizations don't have a policy on what you're allowed to use and what you're allowed to load. So you can't necessarily just blame the end user, but if you have a thousand end users, then and it becomes a really big um, problem and, and how do you manage that because you don't really know what they're all doing. 
Use of competitive applications, um, SharePoint are very, very, very loyal. I mentioned before that the business critical applications are staying in-house, where they are straying a little bit and not by much looking at competitive applications is in collaboration, social tagging, and text analytics. And I do want to mention, because I don't have it, um, on a slide anywhere, social tagging and text analytics was at the very, very bottom of application priorities. So I don't know if people have put that on the back burner or the other issues are more important, but it was kind of uh, interesting because that doesn't match some of our previous surveys. Um, I love this quote, it is simply not realistic to expect broad sets of employees to navigate extensive classification options while referring to a record schedule that may weigh in at more than 100 pages. So we are going to talk about metadata, which is near and dear to my heart. Um, I hate this slide. Um, metadata tagging. If we just look at the bottom line here in 2016, 91% of organizations still use um, manual tagging. Um, in all organizations, the onus is on the end user to correctly add tags so the content can be found, records declared, security violations protected. Without accurate and meaningful metadata, it can't be done. And for the most part, and I'm not dissing end users. End users won't tag with thoughtful assessment and with future retrieval and reuse in mind. And nor should the end user actually be um, responsible. Uh, what's the problem? And I think you can all agree, it's an erroneous objective. Did you know that most um, end users will take the first option from a drop-down list? It's um, often haphazard, two people, same person, will not tag the same way in the morning as in the afternoon. Sometimes people just bypass it unless you make it mandatory and won't put in anything. And it's risky. It actually causes risk to the organization. Um, Moving on to taxonomy, uh, IDC estimates that a taxonomy, uh, an ROI is a minimum of 38 to as much as 600%. Now, this slide was actually very, very surprising to me. The majority have no tool and most of them are not looking for a solution anytime soon. Um, what surprised me was 15.5% of tools are internally developed and I assumed it was most likely a spreadsheet, which is an assumption I shouldn't have made. Maybe people have very complex uh, programs to set up a, set up a taxonomy, but um, really at 15.5% and not many people are actually uh, looking at a tool either. So um, it's basically we start with manual metadata and we have a manual taxonomy. Who's in charge of the uh, taxonomy? This we actually agree with and what we would re recommend. Um, the business professional should have a say in how the taxonomy is managed, which means it should be easy to use. Not that business professionals are not quite smart, but they are also not programmers or IT experts. Um, the numbers we do agree with, and although IT should go down a bit and the subject matter experts up a bit. So it should be a, a, a joint um, effort because the subject matter expert is going to know the language and the verbiage that is used in their specific division and um, area of expertise where IT might not necessarily know that. Um, most are spending about a half day per week managing the taxonomy. I kind of don't understand because if you created it manually, um, that doesn't seem like a lot of time to be spending on it, but um, I, I don't know, I, I don't really know, we didn't ask enough questions to really find out um, how they're managing it and who's managing it and what type of taxonomy they're using. Uh, managed metadata service. Um, user adoption for the past four years has not been overwhelming. It just inches up incrementally. Um, more and more organizations are using the term sets, but it seems that it's reluctantly. Uh, the biggest concerns, according to the survey, is collaboration, search, and content lifecycle management. So if you have no tool or you have your homemade taxonomy, um, these three applications depend heavily on descriptive, accurate metadata for the project to succeed. Um, 
the term store still is time consuming and manual process, but really without a more sophisticated tool, it's the best there is. Term sets, what are you all using term sets for? Um, you told us that you're using them for search, records management, content lifecycle management, information governance, and to build an enterprise metadata repository. What's the problem with this? It's basically the same problem that we have with metadata. Uh, humans will make mistakes, it's potentially inaccurate, it's manually time consuming, and you're dealing with poor metadata at the get-go. So um, you already have a, a significant challenge to overcome when you're work, working with the term sets. Uh, workflows, we asked you all about workflows um, according to Real Story Group. Uh, multiple tools are sometimes needed to develop workflows, resulting in a cumbersome and expensive process, so it's not for the faint of heart. I don't know how to do workflows in SharePoint, so I can't actually comment on the degree of difficulty it is to uh, create um, a workflow, so I have to take their word for it. Workflows, you all are doing workflows for collaboration, search, content lifecycle management, and records management, which again ties back to your priorities. I think application priorities, I think by now you kind of have a gist of what the priorities are. Collaboration is number one, followed by search, security, and content lifecycle management. Collaboration is this year's must-have. Um, collaboration can be many things, though, to uh, many different uh, people. Um, the impetus for Office 365 is based on reduced costs, connectivity that includes remote and mobile, and collaboration. Um, the connectivity and the collaboration are intertwined because of their interdependence on each other. Um, collaboration, as I said, took a significant leap this year. Last year's survey results showed only 16% of the respondents felt that collaboration was a priority, and this year it jumped to 60.2. Um, jumping on the collaboration bandwagon, though, doesn't fix poor knowledge sharing. Uh, collaboration tools have to contribute value to an organization, such as in improving business processes. Uh, the tide has turned. Years ago, executives were against collaboration and social, and now they're all for it, and the end users are against it. So it has to be done in a way that it's acceptable to the end users, and it makes their job easier, or process easier, or provides value to them, because if it doesn't, it won't work. And if you look at a product like um, Yammer, which has been around since 2012, Microsoft still doesn't have a mic uh, marketing plan for where it is, where it should be, what does it do, and when should you use it. It's um, back and available in uh, all the different licenses, but I'm not not sure anyone still knows what to do with it. Um, enterprise search. Um, by itself, search function is limited value. The real value of search is the ongoing efforts needed to establish effective taxonomies and to index and classify content in order to provide meaningful results. Um, and we've seen from some of the previous screens that's interesting is that um, the SharePoint organizations are trying to fix search. So they're not looking at replacing search with something else. They're working on uh, term sets and workflows that help improve the search process. And if we look at this screen, search was obviously one of the highest priorities. And we can see from the graphics, except for 48%, everyone is happy with SharePoint search. Um, so it's uh, not necessarily a real good number. I'm assuming that 48% are the percentage that are working on improving search. Hybrid search, this one was a surprise to me. 38.7 um, felt it was extremely important. 39.7 thought it was a nice to have. And 21.6% thought it was not important. So the way that I looked at it is if I look at the nice to have and the not important, um, that comes up to a pretty large percentage who 
don't really think all that um, much of hybrid search. So again, that could be um, an error on my interpretation, but I had thought that the extremely important would have been much higher than the 38.7%. Uh, security, security is a big deal, and from our survey, you all are pretty confident that um, your security is, is up to snuff. Um, I think that's an, an error, but um, that's what you told us, and we'll see that in the following screen. Um, of, this is an example of email sent. 98% were sent with attachments, secure, highly doubtful. Mobile devices and BYOD have unlocked a hornet's nest and put security of confidential information at risk. Uh, last week, there was the one billionth data breach record happened. One billionth. I guess that's news for um, the security folks. You all felt 72.3% of you. Um, the question was, do you feel your organization is protecting internal confidential content and is protecting content mandated by external organizations? And 72.3% of you said yes, that you were confident. 27% said no, you didn't feel you were con confident. And um, I do have to question, is that um, a false sense of security and when exactly are any type of vulnerabilities being being caught when content is created or ingested, or is it simply after the fact, which is actually could be too late? Over 30% of security breaches happen by end users, um, either maliciously, like Edward Snowden, or just simply by accident. So it's not only the perimeter that needs to be secured, but it's also content um, content, really, and uh, con keeping content safe from end users if it contains confidential information that they're not authorized to view. Um, Uh, according to the Office, this one's a good one, Office 365 Adoption and Risk Report, um, the average company loads 1.37 terabytes of data to Office 365 each month, and 17.4% of the documents uploaded contain sensitive data. Data. The average Office 365 organization experiences 2.7 threats each month within Office 365. And this one you probably chuckle at. For example, the average enterprise has 204 files that contain the word password and the file name stored in OneDrive for business, an increase of 143 files from uh, third quarter 2015. Um, and you might look at it and say, well, 17.4% um, doesn't seem to be a really high number, but as more and more content is consumed, um, the amount of vulnerabilities are going to go up. And the report was looking at uh, security type violations such as PII, PHI, um, HIPAA type information. So it wasn't looking at organizationally defined confidential information that may exist within content as it's created or ingested. So the 17.4 is actually probably kind of um, uh, a low number. Uh, all, all you need is one breach, whether internal or external. A uh, normal size breach will run you about 3.4 million, not including the loss of brands, which is like Target. Um, internally, you may need forensics investigators, regulatory professionals, law enforcement agencies. Um, and I read, I thought of it today, I read this article a couple of years ago and it was actually very interesting, but it said a lot of these really large organizations would rather just um, eat the $3.4 million as pocket change and not really do anything about changing their security model. Um, even now, I think you'll all agree, is we don't find out about a data breach until actually someone finds it and then becomes the tattletale for that company. But um, I know personally, Personally, I've been notified of two data breaches, and I never saw it in the news, or in, in one of them was a, a large company. So I think this happens a lot more than what people expect, which leads me to believe that SharePoint organizations maybe shouldn't be as confident as they are. 
The other thing is content lifecycle management. Um, SharePoint, this has actually been one of um, SharePoint's strength. Um, and the content lifecycle management contains many different uh, types, of, types of approaches. It's document management, content management, uh, enterprise content management, and content management lifecycle. Um, last week, I read an interesting blog by Gartner, and the researcher's purpose was to kill enterprise content management. And they actually used the word kill, which I thought was a little bit strong for um, Gartner. Um, but that was the exact word that was used. Um, I think the new name now is content management services, which the researcher did admit that right now it's just fluff with no substance. So um, I really just thought it was sort of an odd the way that it was worded, and they're not really um, presenting a solution, just a, a name for a solution. But if we look at content lifecycle managed as, as a true application, these are all of the pieces of the pie that have to go into content lifecycle management. So when we look at it, we need to go back and say, what's our environment for? What is our environment? Well, our environment typically will have poor metadata. We have no auto classification, and we have term sets. So working through this, I think most organizations won't necessarily do every single step along the way here, but they will have to do basically pretty many of them. So it's it's a real challenge, I think, for for you all who are concentrating on this to be able to do this successfully just simply with the technology limitations that you have. File shares. We already saw, I talked about OneDrive for Business. Um, fragmented data living outside the company network not only hinders business management, but is subject to staggering compliance and security risks. And that was from Mimecast. Um, in 2015, 38% um, were using um, OneDrive and 32% plan to use it and 32% said they weren't going to use it. Um, so what we've seen, which is very interesting, in 2016 is growth and erosion. So OneDrive for Business did pick up just about what they had predicted last year, but Box is a new entrance and that picked up 13.3%, Google Drive still 7.5 and other has 26.6. So we would expect this pie to change uh, possibly dramatically as uh, organizations will standardize on uh, other solutions other than OneDrive for Business. So OneDrive for Business is clearly the leader here, but we can see organizations are going outside of Microsoft and using other solutions. Um, file shares, uh, why are you not using them? Uh, there was a lot of issues of not using file shares. The one we talked about um, was bringing your own application. And usually users don't know if there's a policy or not. And even if there's a policy, the best end users probably won't follow it anyway. So uh, some of the surprising uh, statistics is uh, 90 percent of cloud applications aren't enterprise grade. The average organization is 600 plus cloud applications. 72% have no, no idea how big an issue it is, and it's 10 times worse than the IT team imagines. So file shares um, now are presenting some problems, but in the future, they're going to be causing more problems unless there are the appropriate tools for all of you to be able to manage it in a proactive way that doesn't use up all of your time and does what it's supposed to do and uh, stops a lot of the uh, loading of um, non-approved uh, content and applications to the system. Uh, and this is, shows what people were not going to use uh, OneDrive for Business for. Um, end users using their own applications at 17%, security 35%. Um, end users will not follow corporate policy 23%. Um, increased likelihood of data 
data breaches 16.5, too hard to manage 15. So um, it looks like the pie is pretty equally divided, but um, those are all valid reasons for not using uh, file shares, which is kind of a shame, but um, that's the way it is. Exchange, we always ask about exchange, and exchange really never changes. Um, it just goes up in number, 45.1% are already using it, 15% plan to use it, and there's 0.3% who are looking at competition. So um, exchange is the uh, de facto solution for um, email. Our white papers, we do have white papers on all of our uh, surveys. Our next webinar you might be interested in, again, it's, it's educational. What we're going to do is cover the different types of taxonomy um, technologies out there. So we're looking at our competitive space and saying, we're not saying who uses what, but we're going to explain the differences in taxonomies and what the strengths are and what the weaknesses are. We will, just not to mislead you, we will show a demo of our taxonomy, but um, basically the majority of the webinar will be focused on looking at um, available technologies and tools and maybe if you're looking at tools, what would be right for you. Um, I want to thank you, and I'm actually compiling questions for the next survey. If you all would like to um, send me an email on questions that you would like to see in the next survey, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it, and I will include them in the, in, in the next survey, and I hope you all uh, take the survey. Uh, thank you very much for attending, and I, I hope it was interesting for you.